eating all the boilers for Boruto episode 15, I would essentially like screw this episode. And not a really boring and lame, but no, this is what I call a cliffhanger episode. Its entire purpose is an epic cliffhanger. So it's really just an episode showing everybody in the least getting back to normal lives, being happy, all that crap. We do see a really great scene of Naruto throwing a ball to a kid. Then you know they're talking about what's gonna happen to Stoom Red A. And nothing special. Well, it's essentially just them talking about whether and what's gonna happen to Stoom Red A. Of the Boruto's eye power is gone since the ghost incident. But essentially what's going essentially what's going on is that no, is that uh they don't know what to do with Sim Red A. And the whole episode is does she want to Kurt go back to the Academy and will the hidden leaf village allow her to? There was this one thing where Naruto made this like really face? When he found out Boruto you talk no jitsu. And I was kind of just like. I really hope that really fades. Is into the fact that Boruto talked to Rene into becoming a good guy. And it's actually about the fact that Boruto did it. And the fact that talking stage to Rene did not surprise you. If it does screw you Naruto. If it does seriously screw that. I mean, how long have we put up with your talk no jitsu crap? <coughs> no, listen, I'm sick. I'm not editing that. But the point is that, um, when Boruto and Naruto were talking later on in the episode, and Boruto's like, don't treat me like a kid, I was there. And Naruto gets a response that I really like. I'm a Hokage, but that doesn't mean I can do whatever I please. Sounds about right to me. It doesn't mean he can do whatever he pleases. But, uh, though so he then also thought that we need to consider the welfare of the entire village. Which is true, and that was really nice. Now, let's now, let's forget about all that and talk about the rest of the episode. Alright, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, the Naruto and Sasuke thing. When Naruto appeared on the tree, first of all, I was, I was kind of annoyed for a second. I was like, why is Naruto so tired? And then I saw the man with black robes, and I was just like, no. And, and he's like, I sent a coin. He's like, it's not gay. I hear Sasuke voice. I'm just like, yeah! I love Adult Sasuke. He is like, so Adult Sasuke is single-handedly the greatest thing to come out of Boruto. He is. That is undebatable. I, he's amazing. Like, he's everything he says. He, he's the most, second most powerful being in the world. And he just doesn't give a damn. And it's amazing. Like, he looked at the seventh Okage who is stronger than him. And he's like, you're late. <laughs> He's like, bitch, you're late. It's, it's amazing. No, but they sit down. Apparently, Magendo, Magendo Teko, where you know, but the the jitsu on some some red to run a back. He went to Kagawa and hit in jitsu, and Sasuke says, "I have no idea how Dondo got his hands on this." But you know what? You want me to be angry? But it's Dondo, and Dondo has like. Shotting God in his arms and was spamming Izanagi. I do not think for a second Dondo is not capable of getting his hand on a Kagura hidden jitsu. Beating Kagura, no, but getting his hand on one of on the formula for one of her hidden jitsu, I can see that. But uh, they talk about that for a little bit, and there's a really great moment. I love this. You see, this is why I like Boruto, just fanning on stuff and making stuff previously be better. And the last thing he said, first of all, he doesn't say goodbye to Naruto, which I love. He, he doesn't say hello, and he doesn't say goodbye. He, you know, this is why I love Sasuke. He's a savage. 
so when he does it, he looks at Naruto and he's like, I want you to give Sakura a message, and he's like, sure thing, Sasuke. I, I'll, I'll deliver to her as soon as, I'll deliver, whatever it is, I'll deliver it to Sakura immediately. I, I'm in the village right now, I'll drop whatever I'm doing once my clone disperses, and I'll go straight to her. What do you want me to tell your wife? And he just like, tell her I'm sorry for everything. And there's this amazing thing where Naruto looks down and he's like, I'm the one who should be sorry. So, you see that, just, that some of his Hokage decisions do burden him with I life. He feels bad. He feels nothing but tremendous guilt for take for believing Sakura. I think they're pretty much turning Sakura into a single mother and causing a child to grow up with no father. He, he blames, and so, this, this thing gives Naruto and Gaiman so much more depth. Because this means when Naruto is with Sarada and is helping Sarada out and is telling her and is trying to and is helping her to save her connection to Sakura, it just makes it some more battle than you realize. Naruto blames himself for all of this. In Naruto's mind, the poor relationship between Sakura and Sarada, Sakura is no. In, it's not worth diving responsible for that. It's not Sakura, but it is. He blames himself. And I have a theory. A lot of people say uh, Sakura was not talking about Saki on purpose. I don't think so. I think the reason Saki is not going to talk about Saki is because Naruto ordered her to. He, he pretty much said, we, we don't get got Saki in this village anymore. Sake, he need, what is he, what he, what, what's he do, what's he doing, our past, I want that under wrap. Maybe that's why. Did you realize, Naruto had only had it mentioned Sake in 15 episodes, at all. Not even in passing, like, all contact. Like, he seems to be trying not to mention the guy. So, I'm not sure, but maybe Naruto ordered Sakura not to tell Sarada about Sake. Maybe, maybe he was afraid of the Muchiha hate thing getting, of her getting a Lucia hate motor. Maybe that's why. We were kind of like Sakura. We're probably all better off if she had to see it instead of Joe Sakura. Sakura. And, I, I don't know. Moving past that thing. Um, Sakura disappeared. Naruto go back to Manila. We don't actually see him deliver the message to Sakura. I'm assuming we'll probably see that next episode or the next couple episodes. We'll probably see a scene of a... We'll probably see a scene of Sarada. Or maybe like at like really late at night, you know, in another couple of hours, standing behind a door or something, if Naruto and Sakura talk about Sasuke. And she'll, she'll probably have this like internal mob like, what, like why does Mon talk about Dag with this guy? I guess he's the Hokage, but what's so special? I'm his daughter. Why, why can Mon talk about the Dag with him, but not me? What's so special about this Naruto guy? Besides that, there's no Kage, but. They will get things like that. Um, then we cut to Tonari. We cut to Tonari, which is just... What the hell? So we cut to... <coughs> we cut to Tonari. And Tonari, he's talking about, like... He's talking about, like, dimensions. And it's really weird. And then... Tonari just kind of r rambled. Nothing he said really down to any different. He kind of just foreshadowed, uh, more, he, he, some, some, some guy like Jugogen or something. So I'm assuming that foreshadowing the existence of another one of those new creatures. Are these new creatures like Otatsuki versions of the tail beast, maybe? And then we cut to Momochiki and Kenshiki. That blew me away. I would I would I'm not I would not expecting them to expand on this. If they're going to expand on Momochiki and Kinshiki and give them backstory and make them interesting, by all means redo the Boruto movie. I already said I want them to redo the Boruto movie. Now I really want them to redo the Boruto movie. I know Pariaki made the Boruto movie a million times better with, with all the with all the room they would get that as much content as they want using the anime. But, the, the, they're talking about, uh, like, distortions in the universe. 
and how they're scaling them on like 10, 16, anything above a 10 must be reported to the clan. So, <clears throat> that was really confusing. I saw that and I was just like, what? Is that really a thing? Okay, sure, I guess. But yeah, all really, really, really good stuff. Now, uh, that's it for my review. Ten out, I, I can't score this episode. I can't. Because, because the last two minutes of it were, like, I was gonna spend the entire video rambling pretty much about the last two minutes. But the rest of the episode was average. It really was. It really like it didn't. It wasn't bad. Because it went by really quickly, and it felt very enjoyable. We got to see Naruto at home with his family for once, and he was like, "Even I get to come home early sometimes." And you can tell Boruto secretly really happy. But uh, you also had the great thing where he not to like come here. She she figured it out in seconds. The Boruto and Naruto are disgusting thing that a small child that isn't even in the academy could not hear. And he's like, Kimawari, come here, help me with dinner. And, he, and then they continue talking. But yeah, that's it for my Boruto review. Um, One Piece. I know, I did Boruto first on the 20th anniversary. Simple reason, I need to go, go walk my dog and take him to the grid and take him to get cleaned. So, and it, you know, clean, groom, so whatever you want to call it. But I need to do that, so I figured that I, and I figured that I had already seen the episode while I was eating breakfast earlier. I would just review it. Yeah. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed one B. I'll be doing a live stream for one B when I get back. There probably won't be a normal review this week. I'm probably gonna do a live stream. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. You did leave the video a like and subscribe for more videos.